Hey, it's Dr. Dunaway here with Cairo Strength, and I'm going to talk about the foundations of core stability and core strength. Um, and usually we talk about groundwork or being able to get stable on the ground before we get up into a, a kneeling or standing position. And if we can't get stable on the ground, then it's really hard to carry over that stability or that coordination of the core contractions into something a little more athletic, say a squat, lunge, or actual um, competition. So. One of the major exercises we use to get stable on the ground to uh, create a little more uh, movement literacy with breathing properly and good core contraction and proper alignment is this dead bug pattern. And then what the dead bug pattern is meant to do is get the cervical spine in proper alignment with the shoulders and thoracic spine, the ribs over the pelvis so we're not opened up in this position, get good breathing patterns. And so once you get all that together, you can create this good, strong, injury resistant core and create more force from the ball and socket joints. So I'll show you the basics of the dead bug, but I wanna show you a bunch of different other variations to kind of play around with because everybody responds a little differently. And this dead bug exercise can get pretty difficult. So there's a lot of good progressions that you can do, say if someone has a bum ankle or, or someone can't get up and go back to sport yet to really challenge that stability of the lumbar spine to really injury proof that low back. So uh, the basics of this dead bug, essentially I usually put a towel under their back and I don't want them to flatten the towel so much that they posterior rotate this pelvis like this. I really want all that motion to come from the ribs. And all I'm trying to do is get ribs on top of spine so when I breathe with my diaphragm, it's a good piston effect instead of this open chain effect that we get if we're extended at the lumbar spine. So we get the ribs down. If they need to cough to feel what I'm talking about, I'll bring the ribs down. Now I have them take a few breaths and I'll touch behind the back, kind of in the flank, and in a couple inches to the side of the belly button. And when they breathe, you should feel that expansion on all sides. And now I'll put one leg up, make sure they can breathe without any pain, try to pull this towel out, make sure that towel's not getting out. I have them slowly extend the leg, see if they continue to keep the pressure on the leg or the pressure on the towel, and I'll do that same thing with the other side. Then we'll come up in this position, bring both arms up, both legs up, as if we're kind of in a squat position. Again, challenge the towel, flatten the spine or flatten the uh, towel to the ground, breathe properly, we got good expansion. Then we can go uh, kind of this cross crawl pattern, making sure that they can keep the core together, make sure there's not any crazy amounts of shaking going on. Um, and that's kind of the basics. Really, if we can kind of get this cross crawl pattern with good stability without their back arching, then we can move on to a couple different fun variations. One of my favorite variations is just an isometric hold. Oftentimes with a lot of athletes that do a lot of explosive uh, type of either competition or training, they don't get a lot of good isometrics. And it's really important to be able to hold good core contractions for a good amount of time. And sometimes, as good as the side planks and front planks are, they get boring sometimes. So this little isometric core contraction with the, uh, with the dead bugs is a good one. If you don't have long enough arms to reach your knee to keep the uh, leg at a good 90-90 position, get a yoga block, push in here. I'm going to put my arm straight above my head and my uh, heel I can either put down on the ground. If they're strong enough to keep that back flat into the ground, you can bring it off the, the ground a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my knee down and my knee's going to push my hand up and I'm just going to breathe. Nice and slowly. And so we're getting good active hip flexion. We're getting good shoulder stability as we kind of depress the shoulder, get the good serratus anterior activation, lat activation going on here. Um, and so we can do that on both sides. Good kind of cross crawl pattern, isometric hold. Um, another fun one to do to kind of challenge a lot of the, the hip and shoulder stability muscles, I'll get a band, wrap it around so I kind of create this hourglass figure with this band, go onto my back, Again, ribs down, make sure I got a good breathing pattern and my spine is, or my chin is retracted. So good, nice cervical uh, posture as well. I'm in this position just like I was and I can slowly extend one arm up, one leg down, breathe, back down, breathe, back down. And at the, whole, the whole time this is happening, my hands are wanting to be pulled together. My feet are wanting to be pulled together. So I'm getting good hip uh, stability. The, the external rotators of hip are really challenging that kind of lateral chain stability. Um, and as I'm going back like this, I'm getting a lot of good shoulder activation. Now, the last one 
And probably one of my more favorite ones is kind of a prelude to a segmental rolling or getting the obliques involved with all this. And what I'll do is I'll get in that same position, so ribs down, chin retracted. I'm going to get a physio ball like this and get, almost, get kind of like you would be in a squat, so my knees aren't right together. My knees are about the width they would be in a, in a close stance squat. I'm going to try to smash this ball with my arms down, so I'm going to get good serratus, lat activation here, drive my hips up, keep my back flat, and I'm just going to kind of rock side to side nice and slowly, trying to keep a good stable spine, keep myself from arching the low back, and just see how far I can get before I topple over and can't hold it anymore. Now with most of these dead bug breathing patterns, what I'll say is I'll say, go ahead and work on this for 30 to 60 second working sets. Get a couple sets in, either throughout your workout, kind of supplementing it, kind of be an active recovery phase. Or at the end, if you're really trying to kind of burn out, you can do longer sets. But it's a great prep, it's a great kind of intermediate work, and it's a great finisher. All of this really focusing on good breathing patterns, core contraction, getting the hips and shoulder stability involved, and the dead bug is such a versatile exercise. Um, it should be used more than just rehabilitative um, and, and to practice good breathing patterns. So I hope you like that. You can use any of these variations. Let me know if you have any other ones. That I mean, I'm sure there's other variations out there. I'd be interested to see that. Um, but if you have any questions, comment below. You can always reach me at drdunaway at chirostrength.com. And again, it's Dr. Dunaway with Cairo Strength saying don't just mend, transcend. Thanks.